So if you've been around the Bitcoin space at all in the past couple of years, you must have heard of the Lightning Network. Now, if you're like me, then you've heard about it a lot, but you don't know what exactly it is, how it works, the pros and cons, and why there's still a debate about it. So we took some time to dive into this topic, and in this video, we're gonna break it all down for you. So if you're curious about this topic and wanna learn something new today, then all you have to do is just keep on watching. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin with BFB and welcome back to our channel where we hope to put out interesting and informative content during this bear market. So while you're watching this video today, if you think you've learned anything at all, then please support us real quick by smashing that like button and subscribing down below if you haven't already. That would help us immensely. Okay, so let's learn about Lightning Network. So the reason we're talking about Lightning Network or similar solutions in the first place is because of Bitcoin scalability. When Bitcoin first started and for quite a while, everything was fine and dandy and it had one megabyte block. But eventually those got filled and fees began to rose and this was a big problem for a supposed global worldwide digital currency in which everything needed to be very accessible with low fees. So people proposed many solutions and segregated witness plus two megabyte blocks were proposed. But instead the Bitcoin cash split happened. So only segregated witness or segwit happened for Bitcoin or BTC and for that it frees up some space without raising the block limit and fixes the transaction malleability issue. In terms of a history of Bitcoin scalability problems. Let's start in early 2017 when the average fees were about 0.15 or 15 cents. This was pre bull market. During the summer, it started to rise to $1 to $5 when the network activity started to rise as well. In December 15, 2017, at the height of the bull market, average fees were $35 per transaction. This was ridiculously high and 97% of blocks were filled. This was even with SegWit in effect because not many have implemented it yet. And then moving on to this, this year in February 2018, the average fees dropped back down to under a dollar because SegWit became adopted more and because the bear market was starting. In May 25th, 2018, the average block size filled was back down to 52%, still in bear market mode. And recently in June to September 2018, average fees were below 10 cents with 60% of the blocks filled. And so it's much more usable now than before. And so just to get a better idea for this whole scalability problem, let's compare Bitcoin to some other payment systems. Well, Bitcoin is actually pretty slow slow. It's three to seven transactions per second compared to Visa and PayPal, which has 4,000 to 65,000 transactions per second at max capacity. So if Bitcoin wants to be more than a censorship resistance store of value and wants to be massly adopted at a worldwide scale, then they have to up their game. That's why segregated witness was the first step, but Lightning Network comes right after it. So what is the Lightning Network? Well, it is a second layer off-chain solution for Bitcoin, and it supports mass adoption while keeping the coin useful, affordable, decent, centralized and censorship resistant. Basically how it works is that you open payment channels between two users or peers that would normally have established relationships and don't really require trust. Subsequently, the payment channels together form a network that can process much more transactions than the Bitcoin blockchain would be able to on its own main chain. This all happens instantaneously with very low fees, all while keeping the same security and decentralization. Each channel processes an enormous amount of payments, but they only broadcast the final state of the channel to be recorded on the Bitcoin blockchain, when that channel is closed. Intermediate transactions do not need to be recorded on the main chain, thus decreasing the workload drastically and increasing the capacity enormously. So how does this all work? Well, a regular on-chain transaction is a transaction that is signed and broadcasted to the network and then recorded in the block. Every transaction has to do this no matter how small or how frequent it is. They all have to be recorded on the blockchain and requires you to wait a long time for confirmation. Now the off-chain second layer lightning network transaction requires two participants like Alice and Bob of the famous cryptographic papers fame who may frequently interact with each other and they can opt to open a payment channel on the Lightning Network. This is a smart contract that holds a committed amount from both sides and the opening state is recorded on the actual Bitcoin blockchain. After that happens, Alice and Bob can send a nearly unlimited amount of transactions back and forth to each other within their own shared smart contract that will be only held on the Lightning Network layer. When they decide to close the channel on the Lightning Network, a second transaction is sent to the Bitcoin 
Bitcoin blockchain, which then records the final state of the payment channel. This way, the Bitcoin blockchain does not need to know all intermediate transactions and they can be instantaneous because they don't need to be recorded. Bitcoin can potentially reach millions of transactions per second in this model. But wait, does this mean everybody will need a payment channel with everyone else they want to transact with? No, they do not. Because let's say Bob wants to buy pizza at the local pizza shop, but he doesn't have a payment channel with the pizza shop. In that case, if his peer Alice does, the payment will go from Bob to Alice via their channel and then Alice to the pizza shop via their channel. That's what it means by a network of payment channels. So what are some important features of the Lightning Network? Well, each payment channel is a multi-sig wallet, which is a smart contract that is funded by one or more parties. Both parties need to agree to open the channel. And this is a hot wallet, which means that the private keys and the funds for this wallet are stored online. Every Lightning Network transaction uses the same signed transaction security model of Bitcoin, which is good because Bitcoin is super secure. However, it's not broadcasted to the Bitcoin blockchain network. Instead, it's held as an IOU within the multi-signature wallet. Now, when you're trying to route funds within the network of payment channels and the Lightning Network, you need to come up with a valid path. Remember the Bob to Alice, a pizza shop example? This requires all nodes to hold at least the same amount as a transaction. This is why it's better for small payments, because if you have a really large payment, it's going to be hard to find nodes that have that same amount, and you might not be able to find a path. Also, each party can choose to close a channel whenever they want. Some reasons may include a party fails to finish their commitment to a channel, does not update their state, or does not close the channel when asked. Routing for the Lightning Network payments is similar to the Tor Network or Onion routing, and so each channel only knows where the funds are coming from and where it's going. It doesn't know anything about the origin or the destination. This adds privacy to the Bitcoin network, and more privacy happens when more open payment channels are out there with multiple users. The recommended amount is 14 connections or open payment channels per user to other peers. So what are some of the advantages of the Lightning Network? Well, first, it will allow for worldwide scalability of Bitcoin by handling most of the small and frequent payments off chain. This will result in much lower transaction fees and make it better for microtransactions. And also it will have faster transactions because there will be no need to wait for long block confirmation times. It will also increase privacy because of what we mentioned earlier with the Tor network model. And also there will be no need to trust participants because users still hold a valid signed transaction so they can always recover their funds if a node misbehaves. Finally, there will be interoperability between other blockchains, for example, Litecoin, by facilitating a feature called atomic swaps. With atomic swaps, it's possible to send a Bitcoin to someone in the Bitcoin network and to receive Litecoin in return on the Litecoin network as an instant and secure transaction. So a big question you might be wondering is, does this all actually work? Well, apparently in the current state, it does. After a long incubation period, the Lightning Network has been live and growing steadily since early 2018. While it's still in its infancy and has bugs and issues to be resolved, the network is currently working at its intended state in the current scale, at least. So who's developing this project? Well, first, the Lightning Labs. This is the company that develops the LND or the Lightning Network Daemon. Also, Async, a French company who's making a product called Eclair. Finally, the Blockstream team that you might have heard of in the Bitcoin space is also implementing the C Lightning client and the Lightning gateway for e-commerce services. A lot of people working on this project in the Bitcoin space. However, of course, there are some concerns, which is why there's still debate surrounding the Lightning network that you may have heard about. First of all, is the routing problem because there has to be an algorithm that calculates the path between nodes to get from A to B that makes sure that everything in between is online and has enough funds. The current algorithm won't work past a certain number of nodes because then the difficulty of calculation will be too high. Current numbers are at between 10,000 to 1 million. Second is securities because these are all hot wallets like we mentioned earlier. These could be targeted by hackers. That's why it's best used for small amounts of funds. Also, they face potential network attacks on the Lightning Network in which there's a distributed denial of service by opening a bunch of channels with small amounts. However, there are fees, so it is limited by the funds of the attackers. They'll have to eventually drain all their funds if they want to do this type of attack. But also, it is interesting to note that the Bitcoin network has also sustained these types of spam attacks before too, and they have survived and came out stronger than ever. Some more concerns. Well, first is centralization. Big companies that have open channels may become hubs, and then everyone decides to connect to them for easy liquidity and access. However, this leads to centralization and can be affected by regulation if governments decide to make these companies regulate and give up information and change how they operate their Lightning Network node. Next up is legal issues. And one big reason why is because running with Tor or Onion routing isn't legal everywhere in the world because it offers maximum anonymity and many countries don't like that. Also, hubs may face regulation like we just mentioned earlier. Finally, a big concern is the fee structure 
structure because nodes get paid fees for relaying Lightning Network transactions, but they also have to pay Bitcoin fees for opening and closing channels. So they might actually be end up losing money since the Lightning Network fees that they earn is super tiny and the Bitcoin fees for opening and closing channels may be significant depending on certain market stats at the moment. So what are our final thoughts about the Lightning Network project? With every project, there are some concerns that are valid and need to be resolved. Other concerns are theoretical and may or may not end up occurring. At least for the midterm future, it certainly will help offload a lot of pressure from the Bitcoin mainnet. It's hard to predict the precise outcome of the current state of the project. Obviously, many people in the Bitcoin community have high hopes and confidence that the Lightning Network will solve the scalability problem. They are confident that the Lightning Network will support Bitcoin eventually into becoming the powerful and competitive worldwide payment network while maintaining its core principles of decentralization and censorship resistance. In that scenario, the Lightning Network would make a great payment network for smaller transactions like buying coffee since it will not overload the main layer of the Bitcoin blockchain. To me, there seems to be solid enough development progress and a working product right now so that we can keep faith that it will eventually bring what it promises. All right, so that's all folks. I hope you learned a lot today. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them down below. We will always take a look and answer every single one of them. So once again, if you could support me real quick by smashing the like button and subscribing down below, I would love y'all for it. This is Kevin. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and peace out.